What's up guys, it is JGB Gaming here and welcome to the second episode of the Making Minnesota United in MLS Powerhouse series. If you did not see the first episode, go ahead, check it out, because obviously you're going to miss and not really understand what's happening. So, in today's episode, it's a lot more gameplay, it's a lot less off the field stuff as the first episode was, a lot more, let's focus on the gameplay, focus on what's happening there. And we are starting off already, we are hosting Whitecaps FC at the Allianz Field. Here are the lineups and the highlights. Looks for the home side. Well, it's the basic 4-4-2 formation, but played well, it can be really effective. And key to its success are the wide midfield players. They have to be fit, they need to be able to run with the ball, and they need to double up with their fullbacks. It's a really tough role for them. And foul it is then. Short and along the ground. And a goal! Chance to equalise here. In it! Find his teammate. Russell Tybert on the offensive. And you've got EA TV. It's Minnesota United, and they take on FC Dallas. I like the look of that game. The atmosphere is always good inside that stadium, and two very good teams. Decent progress with the ball at his feet. Big chance to get them on terms. Well, they haven't created too much lately, but the fans know this is a chance to take the lead here. Well, they haven't overcome all the difficulties. A 3-2 victory, a lot closer than a lot of our games have been recently, but we will take it. We, I mean, pretty good comeback down 1-0, then down 2-1. Comeback win 3-2, thanks to that goal from Boxel. Reynoso is continuing to be an absolute stud for us, and things are looking pretty good. However, in that game, Russell Gathir did pick up an injury. He dislocated his shoulder. He's out for the next two months. This is... Horrible news as he was really starting to pick up steam a little bit and he does have great potential so overall potential we're probably increasing thanks to a dynamic potential. But now that that is out of the way, we're just going to go back to the old rotation. And we are hosting another game at the Allianz Field. This time it is FC Dallas who come up to Minnesota to face us through the lineups and the highlights. Be punished. This is the lineup for the home team. Well, for a while, everybody played with a 4-4-2, and it can still be a very good system. But it does rely very much on your front two getting the better of their markers, and the wide midfield players being good in 1v1 situations. Let's hope they play it well. How can he take them on and beat them? But a good piece of defending to bring it to an end. Couldn't keep it. There's a slide rule pass, and a goal! And a and the textbook interception. Plenty of options. He's in behind. And he's gone and scored to level us again! Another MLS game for you to look forward to live on EA TV. It's Minnesota United up against Real Salt Lake. He's got to score! Could be dangerous. And it might be. Just couldn't get it through. Well, just listen to the atmosphere in here. The fans doing every bit to try and spur their team on for this equaliser. Can they square the game? Oh, they drop it! Splendid defending, and it needed to be. We've had the official word. There will be a minimum of two added minutes. This is looking threatening. Can they forge ahead? Yes is the answer! Yet another 3-2 victory, and yet again another 
down 1-0, down 2-1, win 3-2. So, Amarillo had that late goal to win it for us right now, so keeping up the results as well. And it's it's really just starting to kind of feel like this year is going to be our year. This is just going to be how it's going to go. I mean, again, two results in a row. So, I mean, we things might just end up quite going good for us. Now we are traveling to the Rio Tinto Stadium to face off against Real Salt Lake. Here are the lineups and the highlights. 11 for the visitors. Well, in this shape, if they're wide players stay high up the pitch and get enough of the ball, it's a very attacking lineup. But if they drop too deep, they will then leave the centre forward isolated and it could be difficult for them. This to open the scoring here. And plenty to consider based on what we've seen so far as the second half begins. Promising attack this. Can he finish this? And a goal! Minnesota well, a second United goal for them here. Emmanuel Reynoso. On and on he goes. Great opportunity. And there it is. Cordova. And snuffing out the danger. Cuts it back. And will it be the leveller? Well, there it is. Strong play here. And they have possession again. A move of promise on the flank. And a chance to whip it in here. Oh, it's gone in, would you? This looks threatening. A smart here oh, judgment error by the keeper the danger here as he runs at them this looks interesting this could level it oh it's an own goal a so a three to three goal tie i mean like it was such a weird goal like we we scored a penalty we Reynoso scored a normal goal, but I mean, trading own goals towards the end of the game is, I don't think how anyone thought the game would end or really wanted the game to go. I mean, that will trap goal, own goal was quite horrible. And then, but then again, we got built up by an own goal by themselves. We would have scored anyway if it had gotten through, but I mean, we'll take it. We didn't lose any points, but we, was, I mean, we, we were in position to lose, so I can't complain. We are now traveling to Gillette Stadium to face off against the New England Revolution in the U.S. Open Cup. And I just wanted to take this moment to talk. So, obviously, there's a couple of MLS stadiums that are scanned in the games. Those are mainly soccer-specific. So, for teams like, obviously, the New England Revolution or Chicago Fire, where they play at, you know, Soldier Field or Gillette Stadium, and even New and NYCFC, who play at Yankee Stadium, those stadiums are all scanned in other games of EA Sports that they have made. So they do have the scanning option for these teams. Why aren't they in the game? Like, surely it would just have to be a difference of just moving the lines and putting the camera people in different spots and then changing up the fans. Like, that is a very easy cleanup. You already have the entire stadium scanned into certain games. You don't have to do anything new. So I just don't understand why they're, these big stadiums just aren't scanned in. So I'm trying a little bit something different here, playing a 4-3-2-1, I mean, back line, Sam as it always is, but midfield, we got Dotson, Trap, Reynoso, and then Lord Fragapan and Hunu up top. Hopefully this works out well for us. Here are the highlights. Oh, incredible save, and he snuffed out the danger. Matt Polster. And Carles Heel. Oh, showing excellent vision. There it is! And
Carles Heel. Fruitful looking attack. Happy to take on the shot. In it goes! Getting in there to intercept. And can they exploit the space out wide? Chance to cross. Could be. Won it back. Bow. It's opening up for them. A goal! Well, we're inside the final quarter of an hour now. Good-looking ball. Moving the ball effectively, looking for the right moment. Chance here! A goal! We're yep. successfully cut out well the final whistle almost upon us and this is not going to be an away day that lives long in the memory Stuart give us your take well they just never got going and now it is there for him so we are out and quite convincingly as well five to one loss to the revs we were definitely not ready for this I thought I tried something new it didn't work so don't expect to see that anytime in the future we're now traveling to the Toyota Stadium to face off against FC Dallas. Here are the lineups and the highlights. And introducing the visitors lineup today. Well, it's a 4-3-3 formation with a center forward and two wingers. So it's important that the midfield players give support to the striker whenever the ball goes wide. They can't allow him to be isolated. Just couldn't get it through. Moving it forward. Can he finish? And a go. One nil then. Possession changes hands, the interception there. Making excellent progress with the ball at his feet. And a goal! He's lost it. Farah. Beautifully weighted ball. Producing a save to match it. Well, the crowd are doing their bit. Can they find the equaliser here? Dangerous looking attack. And the cross goes in. Oh, there it is! 3-2 three two, three two victory. I mean, that late, God from, late goal from Laud towards the end of the game to win it for us was absolutely huge may end up being a turning point in the season as we continue to be on an absolute tear in the mls and things are looking really good for us we are now second in the table still only behind seattle saunders who are a title favorite in my eyes so hopefully we get past them shortly i highly doubt it but at least we're still pushing up there and obviously in the round of 16 of the U.S. Open Cup, we were knocked out by the New England Revolution. And guys, that is going to be it for today's episode of the Making Minnesota United MLS Powerhouse. Pretty good episode, I think. Uh, obviously, getting going out in the cup is bad, but results are just going our way. Like, it really does feel like this year is our year. Things are just kind of going our way. And if these things, I mean, if, if things keep going the way they're going... We might be winning a title in our first year. This, that was not at all the plan. I just wanted to get in the playoffs our first year. plan was to win a title by at least our third year. So 
things are looking ahead of schedule. And hopefully you guys are enjoying it as much as I am. Subscribe if you're new. And it is JTB Gaming signing off.